G'day folks, welcome to a uh, nice little Tuesday afternoon and we're going to call it Vintage Jet Tech Tuesday because I've got some more Vintage Jet Tech equipment. Uh, this is a, uh, looks like a VHF channel and um, well basically channel and frequency selector for a uh, Sabre Jets um, transponder or something or communication system, basically a radio. And uh, this was sent to me by Alex, 993CC1. Um, he came across a collection of uh, vintage jet tech along his ways, doing uh, more trucking and scrap pickups and things like that. And he's sending me some more goodies as well. This is the first of the lot. Uh, he's sending me parts of the radar system, which is going to be totally awesome. But this is a, um, I believe it's your, it's your communications channel. This one does single half fractions, single digits, obviously maybe megahertz or uh, kilohertz, I don't know. Again, there's really not a lot of info on it apart from the manufacturer, Fuchs Electronics. And there's a uh, number there. Nice big multi-pin connector on it too, mil-spec connector. Uh, so essentially you got, I think that's um, probably VHF frequency and comm channel or something, or channel, channel and um, main channel and communications channel, I don't really know. But they're all tied together. If I turn it further, it'll roll over to the next ten of, tens of digits. Yeah, so you've got tens and singles on both of them, except this one only divides by half. 50, 55, doesn't have the option of anything in between. Volume, on, test, and that's it. So, let's take this apart. I've already had it apart, and I'm quite amazed at how much they pack into these things, and it's all analogue. There is a circuit board with some resistors on it. They all look the same. And basically, you've got a series of selector switches. You probably have bandwidth selector switches. You can see them in there too. They're ganged up together and they run on a series of gears and cams. So if I turn that one there, you can see these two here are turning over together. That's because I'm going from 29 to 30. But if I go 30 and then go 31, only this bottom one's turning because these little uh, gears and there's little tags down here, little cams. They all have to do a certain amount of revolution before they line up again and trigger the next switch, which will be the tens, singles. Um, in this case, that's half, did half. And if I go back, that's whole digits, essentially, like four or five. Again, I'm only speculating what this is for, or at least how it works. I haven't looked it up yet. I could probably find some info on it, although I'm guessing being Sabre Jet, it's probably not that common. Well, then again, they could have fitted this to a number of different model of aircraft. I mean, there's probably a standard transponder set that went into a number of different things, even helicopters at one point. Who knows, this could have even been used in Vietnam era helicopters or Korean War era hel helicopters. I really don't know. But the way the, um, just the mechanics of it work is just amazing. I've got a message. Yeah, see that's ticking over tens now. And the little cam comes around. Actually, no, this one will not go past 149. And if I go all the way back, it probably I don't think it'll go past 113, 113. Because these little cams behind the uh, lamp wires, they move sequentially, and once you get to a certain point, they all come together and lock up. So this is actually set as far as it can go. It's got a certain channel range, I, should, I guess you should say. 
the channel range on this is set and limited you cannot go past that without internal modification and without the rest of the transponder it's pointless even though it's an old military transponder you probably wouldn't even be allowed to turn it on these days but yeah very nice wiring work everything's tied off and actually there's heat shrink in there so that's interesting it's not all hand Oh yeah, there we go. It's got hand uh, twine bindings. It has been hand bound, but it just looks like they've also used heat shrink. I'm guess guessing this might be from the uh, 1960s even. This could be a later model Sabre component. Not maybe, maybe not the early 50s ones. That's the selector switch. It's made by Fujisoku. Yeah, Fujisoku. MSRC 3-3 and that one there is a 500 ohm potentiometer for volume control it's made by oh, there's a date code there, 68 I think that's a date, 1968 OVA OVARICHEM O.VARICHEM that's what's on it 500 ohm, 20% uh, 0, 3, 0 W3, so like 0 0.3 watts or something. Uh, the lamps, I've had one of them out and with great difficulty managed to get this little cap back in there. They're like a little torch lamp. Uh, 28 volts. Uh, probably AC, I guess. High frequency AC. I don't know. I know a lot of modern jets use 400 hertz AC. Very interesting. <laughs> I like jet tech. I can't wait for the next bits to come in. So there you have it. That is Jet Tech Tuesday. This thing is going on the wall right near my amplifier and my other audio gear. I'm going to build up a wall of vintage gadgets and particularly aircraft stuff if I can find more. I'd love to find more antique um, or vintage uh, military aircraft components and even civil aviation stuff, um, meters or instruments, that sort of thing. Anyway, uh, I believe Alex has the rest of the... Uh, I don't think he has the transponder. They probably would have removed that before the jet was taken out of service or when it was initially, initially decommissioned. But he does have some of the radar equipment I think the display unit and part of the uh, control gear, which is all vacuum tube based, being as old as it is, the transistors simply didn't exist for that kind of application, so there's this big rack of valves and capacitors and things, which is really cool. Looks like a radio chassis, but just more populated. So, yeah, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.